I was going to make this a review video and it might come a little late, but over time I've been wanting to say what I've thought about Canada's um, overall progress in the World Cup, this World Cup. And I know that Canada lost all three of its games, but as far as the performances go, there was a lot of encouragement. I feel that I was going to naturally support Canada this tournament for two reasons. One, I have resided in that country for eight years and I'm now a full citizen. And two, it was Canada's first time in the World Cup in 36 years. Given the magnitude of that last fact, it was always going to be a special occasion to see the Canadian men's football team play in a major tournament. Canada was dealt some difficult cards in its group. Morocco, Croatia and Belgium were three very good sides. Croatia and Belgium are starting to see their golden generation of players near towards retirement. These would be playing against a Canadian team that would be able to make memories by playing these nations. I'm sure that a lot of the young players in Canada can tell their children, even grandchildren, I played against Luka Modric, I played against Kevin De Bruyne, I played against um, even Perisic, and so on and so forth. Canada's first game against Belgium was a real statement. Despite losing 1-0, Canada was the better team for most of that game and had 21 shots on goal. 14 of those shots came in the first half. In the game against Croatia, Canada took the lead and scored its first ever goal in a World Cup with Alfonso Davies heading home in the opening five minutes. However, Croatia was just too strong. And that's why Canada ended up losing in the end. That signalled that it was out of the World Cup. Just because I want to do a mini review in this, I'll talk about Canada losing 2 1 to Morocco. Aguirre might have scored an own goal in that game, but he was solid at the back. Really good performance by Nayef Aguirre. And he can now say, Oh, I played against Canada. So if I go up to him in London and say, I live in Canada, he'll say, oh, I played against them. If we ever do cross paths, that is. I'm sure a lot of Canadians live in London, and maybe it's Canadian West Ham fans live in London that might come across him. Who knows, eh? One of the best things about this Canada team is its diversity. It's a multicultural country. And as far as, as inclusion goes, Canada is one of the best nations in the world at accepting immigrants. I believe half a million are set to come into Canada within the next five years to add to the workforce. Many immigrants come from countries such as the Philippines and other Asian countries to work in Canada and to build better lives. But the same could be said for a lot of the members of the Canadian national team. What if Alfonso Davies' parents had never left that refugee camp and had not moved to Edmonton, Alberta? Would Alfonso have ever had a shot to play the game he loves? Maybe not. Milan Borjan's parents fled Yugoslavia, had grown up there and had raised their son through the difficulty of an Eastern European conflict. Milan's family decided to relocate to Winnipeg when he was 13 years old. He had a good, happy life in Canada, was able to go to school, get educated, and become the starting goalkeeper of the Canadian national team. What if Sam Adekugbe's parents hadn't moved from Nigeria to London, and then London to Canada? They moved twice. They gave Sam an opportunity to play that sport. And look at him now. 
Alistair Johnston's mother is Northern Irish. Jonathan David has American and Haitian ancestry. Asmir Begovic, although he does not play for Canada, was raised in that country. And that's why he speaks with a North American accent. He entered Canada after living in Germany as a refugee. This country has really been a great place for inclusion. And Canada embraces different ethnicities and learning about other cultures. It's made our society what it is. I've met people from all walks of life here. I've met Ukrainians, Filipinos, Russians, Kazakhs, um, French, German, Spanish, Chilean. I couldn't even count on my hand how many people I've met from other backgrounds. But Canada's national team is so inclusive. And it likes to learn about each other. And I think that's a really lovely thing about the team. I think with a few more dual nationality players, we could be go going for something big here. I mean that. The World Cup was just a starter. When 2026 comes around, I will be going. And we'll have a few more players come through then. Who knows? I expect Davies, Buchanan and David to still feature. Of course. Alistair Johnston will still be, will still be there. Of course. Kamal Miller, maybe. Tiba Hutchinson will probably have retired by then, sadly. But he at least can say, I represented my country in the World Cup. And say that as a very proud Canadian. I can't wait for the 2026 World Cup to come around. I'm already counting down the dates and we haven't even finished the 2022 one. But yeah, really happy for the future of Canadian football. And uh, it's in good hands under John Herbman. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, give it the big thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe for more content. Take care, everyone, and I will see you all soon.